Okay guys, so look, this is my five fucking fuck yeah, yeah, five minutes from my bed. Do you know what's the biggest failure of all? Not to come and see this view every fucking day. Just five minutes from my bed and I didn't do I didn't come by for months, months. Look how beautiful it is. It's five minutes from my fucking bed. Five minutes. Hey, hey, hey. So, I fell asleep. I fell like with sleep. I fell asleep while I was browsing the web uh, at 6 in the morning. I woke up by a phone, via phone call. A friend called me around 12. I was talking on the phone for an hour. I'm gonna take a quick shower and I'm gonna record uh, the story of why I started this channel, why I started vlogging basically under the series the guy who fails. I'm gonna explain it because I've been asked a few times the last few days from friends why and how come and I will share it with everybody. See you guys after my shower. So guys, that was a very quick shower. My hair is dry because I didn't wash my hair, I didn't wash my body and my face because I have to keep this angry face clean at least. Now, besides the face, soon I have to start going back to the gym because I have this here for two years and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> so six pack coming soon, hopefully the next year. Uh, as soon as I find a source of income, I'm gonna go back to working out. The problem I have in Scotland, especially during the winter, is I cannot run outdoors because I get cold and everything. So it's, it's horrible. But anyway, let's get on with the series. So, the guy who fails. <clears throat> What's all about? How did it start? Why did I start it? Uh, I believe, guys, if you actually know, <clears throat> if you actually know, you get to understand uh, why I started the series. You might like me more, or you might like the series a bit more. First of all, what I'm doing is, um, if you didn't understand it already, is the subject the guy who fails is me trying to in many ways express what i failed at like on a daily basis sometimes i'm gonna be going back though to my life like an autobiography kind of thing remembering stories what i failed and why maybe i failed some as an entrepreneur spoiler alert i used to be i guess i'm still an entrepreneur in my head in my heart but uh, so always experimenting, which means I always have something to fail at because I always have something new to try. And based on this idea, last year actually I, I wanted to start a vlog, but I didn't know what to start from. And I thought, okay, do I have ideas? And I'm a storyteller. My friends are telling me, why don't you say your stories? Why don't you share your <laughs> stories with people? And not just the real ones, but also sometimes <laughs> the fictional ones, because I actually... Uh, good friends of mine, especially my flatmates, know that when I walk from the city center, let's say, through the park, because I love walking through parks, I love watching the animals, listening to the sounds of the birds, the wind in, on the leaves and everything, so it's, it calms me. So, but while I'm doing that, I actually create fictional stories in my head. Sometimes I share it with my friends uh, verbally, but... I've never written it down or I've never shared it with anyone. And since I was a young boy uh, in school, my teachers always used to praise my fantasy and my storytelling. You know, I used to write like essays, a lot of essays in, in uh, Greek and uh, during school. And actually famously, every single one of my Greek teachers was telling me, you write amazing stories, but your grammar sucks. <laughs> Which is, I take it as a compliment because you know, I'm a creative genius, what can you do? That's a joke. And like a lot of us are really smart. I'm really smart. But, <laughs> but yeah, so moving fast forwarding to today, uh, to why I'm doing these videos. The last year has to be the best year for me, yeah? Uh, last March or April, I actually, uh, my ex-business partner and I decided to go our separate ways because after working on like three years on a project called Groommates, we didn't make it because it was very difficult to get investments. It was a high-risk market for the investors. Uh, we rejected the small investment offers that we had uh, because it wasn't enough for us. Uh, 
uh, the universities that we're dealing with, they were like, yeah, we'll work with you, we'll give you clients, but we need this feature as well, we need this feature as well, we need this feature as well. At the time, maybe I was a bit naive or a bit uh, inexperienced and I did a thing of telling them, you know what, straight away, if you can aff if you can pay in advance, then we can give you these features because we need money to pay engineers. But I did a thing like that before. I was like, yeah, we'll try. We'll try to bring it to you and as soon as we have it, you'll give us a contract. But that should have worked like that. I was fucking stupid, maybe. It's because I was too into my world for these three years. I don't know. And then, a few months later ago, actually, I've heard uh, something very interesting, that in the higher education market, you need to... You need about 18 months to close a sale. And that's for experienced sales people for this market in particular. So if I knew this back then, I would probably employ uh, an experienced salesperson for the higher education market and tell him, you know, for the first contract, you get 50% and then 30% onwards because I cannot pay you and stuff until we get us uh, contracts and then get some investments in. But it's okay. Maybe it wasn't meant to be. Uh, but now I've learned, you know, I've learned more things during, but you know, but you see the subject here, despite the fact that I failed, I came to learn things. I actually learned uh, some, how this market works sometimes. So how to manage uh, engineers, how to build teams, how. So although I failed in many occasions as an entrepreneur, I've learned this, so many awesome things actually, presentations and everything. I'm like, yeah, it was an amazing time. Um, so, but the last year or so, it was very bad for me psychologically. I didn't realize it. So after breaking up with uh, my ex-business partner, uh, I moved on to serve uh, food for a couple of months. Uh, the place here in Edinburgh, uh, serving steaks and stuff, horrible, horrible food. Uh, uh, if you love animals and the environment <laughs> and yourself, <laughs> most of all. But anyway, I did this for a couple of months. Then in July, I got a couple of contracts for market research and, uh, and uh, market strategies and social media implementations. Uh, so I kind of survived through the summer until today with these kind of contracts, but I, um, but I knew that I wasn't 100% focused I knew that I didn't want to work hard in order to get new contracts and stuff, so I ran out of contracts now, which is normal if you don't work hard enough to get new contracts. Uh, the thing that I didn't know is why I was feeling so down, why I was so bad. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, I was listening to a podcast, it's called The Bearded Vegans. I was listening to them a, few, a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and they were... Like I was in bed and I was uh, actually working on my web CV. I was just writing code uh, and stuff and getting frustrated with some code not working, but that's a part of coding. And uh, while I was doing this, I was listening to the podcast of the, of the Bearded Vegans. <clears throat> you can find them on iTunes, they're funny. So uh, at that, as, during the episode that I was listening to, uh, they were saying, they were talking about the distinction between stress and fear. Most people say, yo, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. So me be stressed. Glad you called, living long, just laughing and listening to your cortisol. Come on and have a ball. I'm not stressed, I'm not stressed, cause now that I've had to be my best, I won't be beat by stress. The fact of the matter is that I'm actually afraid and I'm saying that I'm stressed because I don't realize what I'm afraid about, what I'm afraid of. And um, <clears throat> as soon as I realized this in my head, some, somehow it was a wake up call after a year or so. It was the first year of my life that I had no goals, I had no purpose. Like I was feeling that I had no purpose. Like that's painful for me. I'm a person who loves to have purpose. That's why I was doing groupmates. I didn't care about the money. I care about the potential of improving researchers and students results and communications, improving people's lives, making it more efficient. The potential, it was something that was driving me. But then we went to ISPA, which is an accelerator here in Edinburgh, an incubator of some sort, and they changed our mindsets in just six months. We didn't realize this, but what I came to realize is the last couple of months, when I started thinking really about my year, I started thinking of about money and investments and 
and uh, pay customers where before that I didn't mind serving people food, studying full time in fact, serving food and running my business or my project, let's not call it a business, because as soon as we started calling it a business for real, that's when we fucked up our way of thinking. We started thinking money, a lawyers, a contracts, and this cost us money, more money and more time, useless time, we could develop amazing things. So, before you make something that people love, so you get customers because people love what you make, you cannot call it a business. That's my opinion. The mistake I did is I thought I could be a business before I be something I love. And for this reason, more people will love it. You see what I mean? So there, so there you have it. So it was very difficult for me. And then Thomas, my ex-business partner, he was very successful this year. He's had some beautiful contracts uh, with um, the web development, software development projects. And uh, he makes a lot of money. He bought a house with his girlfriend uh, to be, and he invited me for the housewarming and I avoided going because I didn't want to talk to people. I was actually afraid to talk to him. I was afraid to confront him because I was feeling this kind of jealousy inside of me and I didn't want to feel jealous. And uh, it's not a, a feeling that I personally feel. So since I remember myself from young age, I always had a purpose and I was never afraid to try and fail. Yeah. But this year, I lost my purpose and I was afraid to do pretty much about anything. So as soon as I realized this, I confronted Thomas. So two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago, so not yesterday, but the Saturday before, we went for a beer uh, and I told him, you know what, man, I'm jealous uh, of your life. I, I've been afraid of being without purpose and stuff like that. He, he actually confronted me as well and he said, dude, I've been in your position about two years ago. What are you talking about? You are a smart guy, you are a creative guy, you are good at your job. Otherwise, I would have worked with you so long, for so long. You are a passionate guy. Just fucking put your shit together and start looking for a job of some sort. And I started looking for a job. I haven't found anything yet, but I'm start I, I did. The ne very next day, I, in fact, I actually started finalizing my website and in order to help me find a job and stuff, I started blogging. Today, I hope I'm going to blog as well about, um, about the trends that I see in social media and how marketing people can use it in the future, keep it in mind at least. But, but you see, it's been a very difficult year. So, and another friend suggested that I write an autobiography. But... I'm not very disciplined at the moment to sit down and write an autobiography. So I thought maybe I could do it in the form of vlogging. Uh, so, uh, starting from today, or what I do on a daily basis, and then slowly, slowly go and, and make small stories, small videos about past, about the past. Because it's very difficult for me. I was thinking about the failure, uh, a time I failed in the past and I actually started crying by myself. So it's a very difficult emotion, you know? If you start thinking about the past, sometimes you don't want to remember some things, but if you write an autobiography, you will force yourself to remember some feelings, some things, situations that you went through. Uh, I don't feel ready to do this, uh, as to focus and just do this, to write an autobiography, but I can do stories about daily fails, what I failed today uh, to do or what I failed yesterday to do. Uh, but it's because this forces me to try new things. Yeah, If, if I try new things, I know I'm going to fail, but I'm going to learn something or I'm going to get something out of it sometimes. So, uh, so telling these stories and then, for example, I'm going to... One of the stories or a, a recent kind of story I'm going to share sometime the upcoming week is why I feel like I failed the planet for 24 years straight. So that's that means that I'm going to start reflecting a bit farther than just the day or the day before or the week before. So slowly, slowly, I'm going to try to reflect back and just share stories about why I failed. And, and but how I failed, but why it's fine to fail and what I've learned, what I gained from it. And I believe most people fail every day on something, whether this is love, uh, this is work related, this is health related, whatever it is. Most people, if not everybody, fails on a daily basis on small or large things. Uh, so I want you to see my channel as an opportunity to say to yourself, you know what, this guy fails as well. Everybody fails. It's a funny story. I can actually make my story funny as well in my head. 
it's not necessary for me to worry and what do I gain from my failure? What do I gain from my failure? So I'm gonna always try to say, what I failed at and what I gain from my fail for my failure. So basically, I know it's a long video, but I feel like I need to express it. It's important for me this subject of this vlog. So it's the third day in a row that I'm recording. So I, I'm not failing at recording. It's one of my main targets. So the second main target is I'm not gonna stay at home again more than one or two days. I will try my best not to stay at all at home, never. I want to leave home on an average. I want to be outside of the home between three and five hours every single day. So I'm gonna try my best to do that. And in fact, now that I finish recording this video, I'm gonna go outside of the home and I'm gonna record more videos, but it's not gonna be, they're not going to be part of this video because this video is already running long, but I'm going to be part of the guy who fails so guys, I hope this makes sense. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Ooh, just over there. Uh, subscribe if you want to support me and my uh, movement. Basically, one of the, a few days ago, a couple of days ago, actually, I woke up and I left bed and I recorded a video just because of the love I got on Instagram from a few followers. So thank you guys. I know you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, but even on Instagram or on Twitter or whatever you like on Facebook, because I'm uploading the videos on Facebook as well, just leave me your comments. Let me know what you think. And this helps me to keep going. You guys help me keep going. Uh, my friends, my small follower base and hopefully it's gonna grow you guys help me to keep going and i hope i'm helping you to also think and keep going and keep failing as well so subscribe if you want like the video if you like it dislike the video if you disliked it comment negative positive i don't care just let me know that you listen to me that's what i care about that you heard my story and See you guys on the next one.